jazz today we are a trinary uh our missing allison is here uh we have myself chris jazz sequence and gary who i pointed that way to uh on the last episode but he was actually over there so he's in one of these two directions which if you're listening to the podcast i'm making some amazingly funny hand gestures and you can't see them i i haven't actually watched the video does does um does this screen capture include us positionally Yes, or do you only but, video but the positions are, are different on the video than they are on my screen um, because I'm the host, uh, which and the host is always in the top left. Gotcha. I had failed to recognize that. I understand. I understand. Um, hey, let's kick this thing off, huh? Sure. You think? Okay. So uh, I'm Gary. Chris is Chris. Uh, he is an amateur population geneticist. <laughs> a welterweight boxer in his city. Um, Allison is Allison. She is a professional encourager, deep thinker. It's um, true. And um, what would you call someone that farms daisies? Just a daisy farmer? <laughs> yes. It's a pretty straightforward title. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a scientist here. Slow down. <laughs> It's true, though. Uh, if if Allison had not encouraged us to make this podcast, this podcast would just be us sparring on Twitter. Mostly exchanging gifts of Fry, Mooning, Chris. Mostly you sending me gifts of Fry, Mooning, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a thing for a while. I'm not sure. That why. was really the the beginnings of binary jazz. Was was Gary Mooning me constantly on Twitter? On Twitter. Which is not a violation of terms of service. How weird is that? You can do anything on Twitter, man. Anything. It's, it's true. You can threaten nuclear war. Or repetitive gifts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that we went the other way with that. <laughs> it would have been a very that is extreme. Dark, You're right. <laughs> it would have been a very dark episode otherwise. Yeah. yeah. I'm not big on nuclear war. <laughs> So that's, that's good. I, I, it wasn't a topic I was bringing to the table. It's not really on my list of, of possible. Oh, I guess it's probably a good point though. So the way this, this podcast works is Allison brings a topic. Chris and I have no idea what the topic is. Um, and then uh, we try and discuss said topic and Allison uh, calls BS on us on occasion. Um, although we okay, don't have to. And otherwise laughs hysterically, probably. It's purely for my amusement. Yeah. It's true. I mean, when she said she'd be our one listener, we decided to invite her on the show and make her a permanent uh, fixture. <laughs> Got thrown in the boat for the ride. <laughs> That's what you get for volunteering. That's true. It's my so our topic bear. today, can we get a drum roll, please? The topic today is cryptozoology. <laughs> <laughs> Which is obviously the study of cryptic zoos. Huh. So very mysterious. Well, I can expand on it a little more to give you a work with. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe before you do that, we should talk about if we actually know what the topic is before you expand on it. So Chris, I, I like, I'm going to go with this. I actually, I'm fairly sure I am under what I know what cryptozoology is, but I'm going to go with this idea that it's, uh, has to do with very mysterious <laughs> zoos. Um, the mm -hmm. zoos are often hidden and uh, have no posted address, and you have to find them through a uh, an app that is only available on like uh, two generation old uh, Android uh, with a particular uh, GPS uh, app uh, similar to um, geocaching. It's geo zooing. Um, but that's, and then you find these <laughs> people who <laughs> work at these uh, crypto zoos. Um, cri crypto zoos are really going to be the next big thing <laughs> after Bitcoin. <laughs> oh, well, that was my bit. I was going to say, clearly you were wrong. Crypto zoo is um, blockchain. Or something. <laughs> For zoos. <laughs> For zoos. Um, I think cryptozoology. Blockchain animals. 
Um, a lineup so of weird elephants. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's the study of uh, really bizarre deep sea fish or life forms, isn't it? Or no, uh, the life forms that live in, I don't know, volcanoes? It's one of those things. Do you want me to answer? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I'm gonna need some context for this one. It'll be a very short episode. I'm sorry, for the benefit of our listeners who might not know what cryptozoology is. <laughs> Meanwhile, all the listeners, all all of them, all of them, all of them are shouting because they're just in shock and awe that that it's a term that <laughs> is thrown out with no knowledge. Um cryptozoology is some might call it a pseudoscience, some might call it a science, depending on where you land. Um that it's like to prove the existence of things like, say, Bigfoot, Loch Ness Monster, the Chupacabra. Um, so like animals, not animals from folklore. So I was partially right. Yeah. Curious zoos. And there are connections to Bitcoin in there. Uh, there have to be. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, if, and if you did happen to find all of these animals, Loch Ness Monster, uh, abominable snowman bigfoot etc then you would put them in a crypto zoo obvious yeah oh for sure <laughs> you can prove hard. their existence that's where they would live <laughs> in a crypto zoo yes <laughs> uh, uh, wow gary's, is, gary's mind different. is blown right now it's a very different track than um than last week's uh, he did not realize that this was actually a thing yeah i didn't know you could d define it the study of make-believe animals like this. <laughs> you have that. Mm, mm, so, and that's and that's the discussion that can occur. Whether they're made make, up or make believe. Make so, believe. so, so cryptozoology, pseudoscience, or real science? I guess. Nessie, this yo. Um, so I'll say on that right, like, absence of proof is not proof of absence. I will grant you that. On the same token, um, I I, I don't I don't know enough about the cryptozoos. The, the specifics of the Loch Ness monster, like how big is Nessie supposed to be? How big is Lake Nessie's in? Um, I mean, we either put a man on the moon or faked it. If we can't find like a big creature in a lake, uh, I don't know. That's that's my well, thought we, process. We haven't drained the lake, so you know, who knows what's what's in there? <laughs> We're working on it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I I uh, I think I stand firmly in the um, the pseudoscience arena because for this particular reason like if we discover the animal if nessie does exist um she as she's always referred to would suddenly be um just standard zoology and no longer cryptozoology right oh so like the existence of these these the plot twists put them in a zoo <laughs> i mean in a zoology and not standard zoology that's you know, like like a county zoology, not like although the you fancy I mean, ones you get to. If if you discover and when you discover animals they've never discovered before, yeah, you have to first like the first step is like identifying what the fuck it is that you're looking at. I mean, that's what you know scientists. It's, I mean, that's why I brought up the whole like uh, animals or life forms live in, inside volcanoes or by uh, furnace vents in the deep 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 under the sea because like there are these weird bizarre creatures that can exist nowhere else than next to a sulfuric vent spewing ridiculously hot fumes from the center of the earth and that is the only place that they can live and we can't see them because it's so far underwater and it's so toxic to to people and the pressure from the water would just destroy your submarine that we can't properly study these these animals so like so so there are things that we don't know about. We don't. So that indicates to me, things. and those fallen cryptos, like the cryptozoology no, umbrella. Not necessarily, but 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 it's it's a thing that we don't know. It's it's just like Nessie. We have not been able to study many creatures adequately because we just can't get there and and see them. It's just because we can't see them doesn't mean that they don't. They're not. Yeah, I mean, so like we we went to cryptozoology, obviously, like you know, Loch Ness monster and Sasquatch and. Um, I like that you used his actual title instead of instead of Bigfoot. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I got refer to people in a professional context. <laughs> Polite. If Casey's listening. If she's listening. I don't know. Um, but but does that does it also include like a bunch of animals or potential animals that we've never heard of? I mean, is that also part of cryptozoology? Like like seahorses that have wings or. <laughs> 
you know, that sort of thing? Would that be like, because I suggested is that now part of cryptozoology canon? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you get to just contribute to canon so, so easily. <laughs> cryptozoology is not open source is what we're saying. It's not, yeah, I don't, I think it has to be based in like a folklore kind of the hidden animal itself. So I don't think you can just be like, oh, it's a wombat with wings and now that's a cryptid. I think it has to be, because it's like there's storytelling, I think, involved in it, which is like part of the, part of the mystery. So dragons. Oh man, dragons would be cool, right? But dragons, well, I mean. So that's your sand, like your line in the sand. You're like, dragons are fine, but Nessie. No, but I mean like dragons would be cryptozoology because they have stories and they have people have seen them, at least in stories they have, but really they're just dinosaur bones. I thought Auntie Nessie, I, I mean, I, I, I just think dragons would be fantastic, you know? I don't know. What's not fantastic about Nessie? I know, what is not fantastic about Nessie? Giant sea. I, I don't know. I mean, it, it seems a little passe, right? It's a huge creature in a big lake in Western Europe. Like, okay, fine. I, I'm, but I mean, dragons, right? I mean, dragons, I mean, dragons span a lot of different cultures and, and some of them breathe fire. I mean, like, whoa. <laughs> I love that Nessie bores you. <laughs> no, I see. You're like, I'm pretty into science, but dragons, <laughs> that I can get on board with. I don't think I said I'm pretty, did I say I'm pretty into science? I think I said I'm big yeah, on science. Okay. I'm pretty big on science. Is no, right? I'm not very into science because I, I, you know, you have to have a hypothesis and you have to, you know, test it and that kind of, I'd rather just ignorantly have a hypothesis and follow that, right? Prove it. <laughs> Write software for a living, like test? No, that's not how this works. <laughs> Well, like, um, show killer. <laughs> <laughs> like, until oh, um, a few years ago, we had never, like, people had never got, had footage of like giant squids. Like, we just weren't able mm -hmm. to, but we knew they existed. Like, we're like, they're there deep in the ocean, but we have no actual footage of a living giant squid. So, so, but we knew they exist because we had, we had dead what? giant squid. <laughs> yeah, but we don't have a dead, a dead. Loch Ness Monster or Sasquatch or... No, lots of people have taken pictures of Nessie. Very, you know, and somewhat... Let me, let me first say, this is going to kill my afternoon looking at, like... Really Nessie pictures? Like, fake, <laughs> photo, fake photos of, of creatures that don't exist. Um, and pictures of dragons. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so there was... I d on Discovery a couple years back was that big like Sasquatch. I don't know. Discovery big, was big on Sasquatch a few years ago. You know, back when they did sciencey stuff, um, <laughs> sort of pseudo sciencey stuff. Um, and I, don't know, I watched it, but I had worked with a guy that um, was really big into it and was um, was like, "Hey, you know, they they travel underneath power lines." And I happen to live on power line, like you know, there's power lines behind my property. He said it's like the highway for Sasquatch. So since then, like I always, I mean, it's easier for them to get around, right? The land is cleared, so you would walk near the edge of the trees because the land is already cleared for you instead of walking through the floor. I don't know, Chris. I don't understand the logic. I'm just telling you what I heard, right? <laughs> so since then, I've hoped that one day I'll see a Sasquatch like trapezing across my backyard. Um, yeah, I don't. I've, I've not. I don't. I really don't think Sasquatch is a thing. Yeah, I mean, I think it's more likely that it, it's. Um, based on the photography that I've seen, that it's just you know a bad photo of a, a bear, an unkempt bear. Or a dude in the forest hunting. <laughs> I did. So I had a, I was in Boy Scouts when I was young. Um, and we had this scoutmaster that, um, I guess there was like a big, big hype in the area where I grew up around the Loch Ness Monster at a park. Not the Loch Ness Monster, a Bigfoot at this park. So he drove a um, Volkswagen Beetle and he convinced his brother to help him roll it on its side. Wait, Bigfoot dressed a as Volkswagen a, Beagle, Beetle? No, my scoutmaster did. But he convinced his brother to help him roll on its side. And he would dress up as Sasquatch and he got his picture in like the local newspaper and stuff and jumping on the side of his car and then flipped it back upright and ran away. Um, I thought the story was going to be a lot better than it was. I don't remember the guy's name. <laughs> so. It just gets better, Gary. <laughs> yeah, you know. I, a deep, ten, ten episodes in, I'm um, kind of a pro at this, you know, storytelling thing. Ten. And we mean, by 10, <laughs> by 10, we mean one zero, which is episode two in binary. Yeah, so I, um, I will say I am embarrassed that we didn't think of that. Um, yeah, it is pretty embarrassing. Actually, I think I did think about it, and I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. But 
now I, I have to do that. It's a long <laughs> path to carry it's on. A long path. I'm gonna I'm gonna lose count at some point. My binary is still really rusty. Um, I have a uh, five, and then I have an app on my watch um, that gives me time in binary. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, that's well. I, that angle is not working for anybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's Sorry. great. Good um, dots. Good dots. Well, the reason, actually, the reason I I downloaded this app is because I'm so it glad had, this is an audio podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here, look at look at my wrist. Let's do thirty <laughs> seconds of silence. Um, so the reason I downloaded the app is it also has um, time since Unix Epoch, which does come in handy on a daily basis, right? You know, timestamp. Um, but I happens to have that binary thing flown in. Flown in? Thrown in. Flown in. Um, flew it into the app. Uh, so that's fun to put as my face sometimes on my watch instead I don't of. I think it's ever fun. It's fun for me. Especially when I'm like, what time is it? We'll never know. <laughs> um, sure. So, uh, cryptozoology. Hey, what about like things? Um, other other animals that were on Discovery, like um, was like Megalodon a thing on Discovery? Birds. Is that a real creature? That's a real dinosaur, isn't it? Megalodon. I'm pretty sure that's a real thing. There was there's a everything huge... that was on the Discovery Channel is not a cryptozoological <laughs> cryptozoological animal. I don't know, man. They've got that Shark Week thing. Have you ever seen a shark in person? Uh, I've seen a shark, uh, very small sharks in an aquarium. They've got these great whites, right? You ever seen one of those? I've Person? never seen a great white, and if I did, except on Jaws, yeah, which is a robot, and at Universal Studios, which is possibly the same robot, but possibly a less expensive robot. But no, I've not seen a great white in person. Wasn't the robot named Bruce? A Jaws? robot named Bruce. The, the 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 shark, yeah, was named Bruce. I, I think was the robot's name. I don't. My Jaws. Somebody Google are, that. <laughs> My Jaws lore is lacking. I what? think Bruce was the name of one of the sharks in Finding Nemo. Robot. That's true. Maybe that's an inside joke then. Maybe mm -hmm. I would actually probably believe that the shark from... You could easily yeah. tell from this like, Pixar trivia and I'd be like, seems, seems legit. According to Google, which is a search engine, what is the name of the shark in Jaws? Really? In addition to the well-known nickname of Bruce, Steven Spielberg also called the shark the Great White Turd. <laughs> That was a really great time spit take. <laughs> Glad we covered that, right? Yeah. Um. <laughs> Near where my folks live in Southern California, um, a little while ago, there was like a family of like great whites that were hanging out. I, I feel I need to hop in here too and say, say that like I was not seriously suggesting that great whites, great whites are um, cryptozoology. I was trying to make a joke. Right? Didn't. Well, I think with yeah. cryptozoology, it's a pretty big umbrella of what you could and could not believe underneath that umbrella. <laughs> but I don't think great whites are in there. <laughs> but, I believe but great whites. wombats with wings, just because I said it, that's not a thing. No. It's not canon. No. Nope. You can't just add things how, in. How, how, where is the line? That is a great question. So what, how much, how much cultural acceptance does there need to be for an animal to be considered like part of cryptozoology canon? And I mean, like I could name like maybe five, yeah, fake creatures or Before. possibly. I, I can't think of five, so I'm curious which ones I'm missing. Uh, Nessie, like, obviously. What, Nessie. What, what cryptids you're missing? Cryptids. Is that, a, that that their official title? Well, like <laughs> yes, yeah, actually. Okay, yeah. So yeah, so like we, we, the major ones are like chupacabra, right? Sasquatch. Is the Abominable Snowman, Snowman a version, a subseries of Sasquatch, or is that separate? I feel I'm, like a, it's like a snow version. I feel like it's a separate. It's like polar okay. bears are different than grizzly bears. Okay. Um, Nessie. Um, you there's said also a, there's a North American I, version of Nessie. There's a North American. Really? It lives in like uh, a lake in like the Great Lake somewhere. Is that right? Oh, yeah. do, 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 it's like a big crocodile. Right, they did that movie. It was in Lake. Is it? No, I think it's. It's. Uh, I think it's like Nessie, and it lives in like Lake Champlain, and hmm. I think, or one of those okay. big lakes up in uh, Michigan. Okay. 
So we gotta be missing some. A, in ones, my right? travels, I have never come across a uh, cryptid. Of course not, because the moment you came across it, it would no longer exist in cryptic zoology. It would be in vanilla zoology. <laughs> That's only if I could prove that its existence and that we could go there with like needles and syringes and test it the crap out of it. Oh man, that's interesting too. So if I'm a guy. Because if I just said I saw Bigfoot and I took a picture of it, no one's going to believe me that I saw Bigfoot, right? <laughs> I could show them like the footprints and I could like say, here's some fur that I ripped off of Bigfoot when he was attacking me. Um, I could have a picture and they're just going to say it's a dude in a gorilla costume. So, well, I feel like you probably it's a the very, hair it's a like, very uh, sad and maligned and misunderstood science. So, yeah, <laughs> like, I guess so. it's kind of like our goth teenagerhood. Uh, so that that gets me thinking, right? Like, if you're a person that that has seen Bigfoot and you are 100 percent certain that you have, and you have a clip of hair, right? Is there not like a gorilla costume testing machine we can put this hair sample into that comes back like yes or no? Um, uh, further, like how frustrated must you be if everyone's like, it's not a thing. I saw it and I have its hair and its hair happened to be made out of the same material that a gorilla costume is made out of. <laughs> Wait, also this person got close enough to see it and collect some sort of hair sample? In this, That's why they're frustrated this, that no one believes them, right? Exactly. Wouldn't you be frustrated in that situation? Yes, they're not lying. Like... I really am dating a supermodel. She just goes to a different school, you know? She's from Canada. <laughs> I, have, I have some of her hair that I brush. <laughs> yeah, that's what, totally that's... not my mom's hair. It's a different color. <laughs> it's gray? What? Huh? <laughs> no, it's blonde. So weird. It's so really weird. light blonde. She's like platinum blonde. So what, are, what else are we missing? What cryptids are we missing? Bob. Um, I guess, I mean, some people might consider stories of things like the Jersey Devil or things like that, I guess, cryptids. Mm. It's like those vague stories of... Slenderman. So, <laughs> so, so do, like, zombies fall in this? No, you're always with the zombies. The zombies are real, Gary. <laughs> we were talking about zombies. Zombies, that's my question last, week, last time. Uh, <laughs> I'll go on record. Anti-zombie. Yes, a firm anti-zombie stance there. <laughs> Un unlike the kind of wishy-washy stance on science. <laughs> I'm kind of big on it. Zombies? No. No. <laughs> Not big on zombies. <clears throat> Not big on zombies. I think I, look, dragons, dragons, right? We miss dragons in our list. Are they really on the list? I don't know if they actually are, but they should be, right? They should be. I could see the argument for them being on the list. If they're on the list, does that make them one step closer to being real? Because if so, yes, definitely on the list. But I think that's the thing is that at some point, things like a gorilla and a giant squid would have been on the list because just because we didn't have exactly like yeah. someone saw a gorilla and was like, did you, did everybody else just see that? And everyone's like, no. <laughs> and I, I still I still think that a lot of the stories of dragons come from people finding basically dinosaur bones of really large reptilian animals and not connecting that this thing right here is actually a leg bone and they're just seeing like this really long like spine and tail and they're thinking oh it's a flying dragon thing hmm. that's fair um i feel like every year or two there's probably a couple times in the news i see that um, scientists have discovered some new species of something or other right and i usually don't get too jazzed about it but it always does make me pause for a minute like to think Wow, there's a, I mean, About if we're just discovering animals. Things that we don't know, yes. Yeah, I mean, right. I feel like in, in, the, what it, in 2018, we probably have a handle on the animals that are on the earth, but, you know, some scientist is like, holy cow, no one's ever seen this one before, right? And he, he probably, as a scientist, has to go through the same, same malarkey that a Sasquatch um, observer would have to go through, like, in the general population, you know? Like, his science -y colleagues would all be no, dude. No. Right? And I don't know. I, I don't know. Yeah, I no, feel like it's, it's mostly insects, though, isn't it? Is it usually insects and frogs that they're discovering? No, there's, there's uh, all sorts fish. of, all sorts of um, yeah, deep sea fish that live near volcanoes. I feel like if a mammal were discovered, people would really freak out. Some new mammal, right? 
Would you freak out? Would you be excited if there's some kind of new mammal discovered? Like a... Like versus a mo- like a moth or something that I'm like, well, of course we didn't notice that guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's, maybe it's the size to me that would make it more interesting. Yeah. I think that that's... But I mean, like, they're always finding new dinosaurs. Or, I mean... So I, so I live in Utah, and so, you know, there's lots of dinosaur bones in Utah. Um, that's where the fossil fuels come from. Um, and, uh, yeah, they're always finding new dinosaurs. There's actually a dinosaur that is named after Utah. There's a Utah Ceratops. Uh, I would have gone for Utah Saurus, but <laughs> no one asked me, so. Kind of rolls off the uh, tongue a little better, don't you think? Yeah. Uh, so, so, yeah, there's, and, and those are pretty big animals. Um, and actually, the, the, I mean, the interesting thing about that is that a lot of times it has, it's like, oh no, these bones go over here with this thing and this head and yeah. Um, a lot, and it's really hard because uh, there's, there's a place up in, uh, Northeastern Utah, uh, over by Colorado, uh, which is dinosaur national monument. And it is where there was, um, basically there used to be a river. Uh, and, a f- and it flooded. And so there's this section of, of the wash where there's all of these uh, dinosaur bones. And the reason why is because it flooded. And there was like a, there's like a, I think there's like a, like a tar pit or something. So like they got stuck and then it flooded. And then, so all these bones are all like mixed together in a big like mass. And they have no idea what it's like, well, this goes with, with this thing, I guess. Um, oh, totally! I would they're all like flooding like, near, is in all in the same place, and they all like just... dinosaur Legos. Yes. Oh, yes. I'm on board. Yeah, I, I want to go out and build dinosaurs. You can there. you can go there, and there's there's a there's a rock wall where they're actively like chipping away at it, and you can go there, and, and there's like bones that are like partially revealed, and you can see like okay, here's part of a tyrannosaur, and over right next to it is part of a I don't know like type Utahsaurus, right? obviously. Yeah, right, Utahsaurus, obviously, and yeah. Allosaurus or whatever, you know, like all these things. Yeah. Are, jumbled together in a big like wall that you can actually look at and it's pretty cool we had a conversation um briefly about animals in our slack um allison was asking about the wildlife here in florida i feel like alligators are a uh, cool i don't know if they're actually an ancestor of dinosaurs or not but i feel like they're pretty cool i like seeing alligators in the wild there are uh prehistoric uh descendants or parents i guess uh the alligators and crocodiles, modern day alligators and crocodiles are descended from prehistoric animals, but not dinosaurs because they're not technically dinosaurs. Um, but there are, I mean, there, there are very large alligator like lizards. So, um, animals. The, oh, the family and I went to the um, Jacksonville Crypto Zoo um, not too long ago, or the regular zoo, Jacksonville regular zoo. And um, there's a boardwalk over the alligator exhibit. It was in, it was in December. It's, chilly so i mean probably like in the 50s here maybe 40s or 50s so cold for an alligator right um and as it was it was nighttime they had like christmas lights set up and it was like their night of lights at the zoo kind of thing right and um so we, we wandered around and i wanted to go see if there were any alligators out and directly underneath the platform we were standing on you know the edge and you could look and this alligator head was sticking up on I mean, this huge alligator and it was really um just really neat and intimidating i mean you know safe in a zoo and in a crypto zoo but um I mean, just to see that thing like staring back at you and like, oh man, they're, they're neat. I like alligators. Um, I feel though we are coming to the time in the show where we hit um, a series of questions that require quick answers. No? Yes. Assuming we have those questions. We have the questions. Yes. Excellent. <laughs> and yes, we're definitely at that part of the show. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Those questions are here. Okay. First question. Uh, do you know anyone whose favorite band is Aerosmith? Oh, Jesus. No. I mean, it, they, if, if so, they have not loudly professed it. So they're I mean, perhaps embarrassed on some level about that. Um, but no. I feel like I did in high school. But I sure did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there's a different thing. Like, favorite band now is Aerosmith versus favorite band in like 1994 is Aerosmith. There's a big difference between those things. So, no. but yeah, no, I don't know. But I, mean, I, I don't know people, so. <laughs> fair, also fair. <laughs> I mean, everyone that I know is in this room. Yeah, right? <laughs> okay, next question. Uh, what do you think cats dream about? Oh. 
food. I mean, like no, not just food. Yeah, a hundred percent food. My cat is is totally driven by food. That's all my cat cares about. My cat, who just walked across my lap a minute ago, doesn't doesn't like me. I mean, I've had this cat for fifteen years, and this cat merely tolerates my existence, only because I feed him, um, and even not like on a regular schedule. You know, that's not always true, though. Um, I think that is true for some cats. Uh, maybe not like they don't actually care about you. I think they always. I think they do care about you. I think they do bond with their human. Um, but I don't think that it doesn't care about you. you might just act that way, and act really aloof. Um, no, I, we have one of our cats, my daughter's cat, Luna. Um, last night we were watching The Muppet Show because we were introducing the kids to The Muppet Show. Uh, we went to the Jim Henson exhibit at Mopop and when we were in uh, Seattle. And so now we're, I said, we need to watch The Muppet Show with the kids. Uh, so we got the whole series. Anyway, uh, so Luna runs into the room and she's carrying like this felt ornament that was on the tree. And she's like, oh, I'm proud of herself, whatever. And she's like, drops it in front of us. I'm like, oh, great. You brought us a toy. And then she leaves the room <laughs> and then she comes back like 10 minutes later and she has bought, uh, brought like a pom-pom that my daughter made. And she brought it in her mouth runs into the room and drops that in front of us. Like, oh, good. You brought us a pom-pom. <laughs> she, doesn't, she didn't bring them to play. So she, so it, re, it occurred to me later that she brought it as like, here, look what I found. I'm showing you my people, my favorite people in the world. This, these things that I found that I think are wonderful. Um, or I think, conversely, your cat was like, hey, clean up your crap. Stop leaving it everywhere, right? <laughs> no, I think, I, think that, I think that cats dream about their people often. Hmm. I think they also probably dream about food and catching <laughs> food. Um, you know, this question, especially domesticated cats, who don't get to catch their own food. They probably dream about those birds that are outside and finally grabbing that bird. But um, yeah, I, I don't know. I think this question would be, would be dynamically different. Like if you're a cat person or a dog person, and that is probably it's a much longer conversation than we have time for today, unfortunately, uh, because I'm very much a dog person and we have a cat dog and the dog, I think dreams wonderful things and the cat <laughs> dreams about food. So yeah. I think, I think my fault. I mean, I'll bear, I'll bear the blame. My fault. I'm a pessimist here. Yeah, that's fine. I'm cool with that. I mean, my cat's been on camera. Where's yours? I'm saying. Uh, not on camera. Yeah. So next question. Ooh, okay. Well, uh, you both have kids. If you could replicate one live con concert experience from your younger days, say, to have them attend, what concert would it be? Aerosmith, 1996. <laughs> um, at the uh, Ice Palace in Tampa. No, um, <laughs> geez. I'll go, I'll go weird. Um, I would like them to um, be a performer in the acapella choir I sang with in college. <laughs> um, because I, I, because that was, um, there were some very magical experiences then. I'll, none particularly come to mind that stand above the rest, but the, like the actual performing itself and being with a group of people that are driven by the same art um, really has some uh, like amazing, you know, emotional moments. So that would be musical experience, a concert that I wish I could replicate that they could be in or a part of. In See, I, I've gone to concerts with my kids, uh, several, and I went to concerts as a kid and I remember many of those concerts being fairly miserable experiences. Um, so rather than thinking back to an experience, uh, a concert that I have gone to that I enjoy that, that I would like to share with them, I would rather share with them an experience at a concert that I had, which was seeing Lou Reed at Great America uh, when I was probably five I don't know uh and I was miserable for like 80 percent of the show and like tired and grumpy and we'd spent the day at Great America so I was like exhausted and it was loud and you know the songs and Lou Reed doesn't really sing he just sort of talks monotone into a microphone and then he played uh what was it Vicious and I was up and I was on my feet and I was standing on the bench and I was dancing and I was singing and it was like, everything was amazing. Uh, and I would like that sort of experience for my kids when I take them to uh, concerts that they are miserable at. To have that one, ex that one thing is like, oh, this is the thing I re recognize and everything after that is fine. On that note, 
See you next time. <laughs> that was abrupt, but yes. well, it says we have less than a minute, and it, it says for three minutes. I've been in a panic, <laughs> <laughs> a silent a whirlwind. Panic. Let's end on a whirlwind of anxiety. <laughs> <sighs> Yeah, well, uh, this is a long minute. A long minute. I don't think I could hold my breath for Going. this minute. Okay. Yeah, cool. Well, see you.